Welcome to Lesson 10, Part 1. I'm going to focus here on women's um, hormonal contraception and replacement. Um, later, in other sections, we'll discuss the male hormone replacement, treatment for di erectile dysfunction in the student presentation, BPH, and the urinary incontinence treatments. This is by no means representative. Again, it's a sample of the various drug classes you'll be hitting as you go through this lesson. I think that this um, video really explains um, hormonal, combined hormonal contraceptive and uh, as progestin only very nicely, um, especially the first part, which I'm going to take you to here, explaining the um, cycle and the hormones in the body and how the contraceptives work. How it worked. My best friend was in a sorority at UC Berkeley. They had someone come to the sorority and tell all the girls how the pill worked. And this person said that the way the pill worked is that it convinces your body that you're pregnant. And I was like, what? So to understand how various methods of hormonal contraception works, have to understand how a woman's menstrual cycle works. So first we'll go over that. This is an average 28-day cycle with day 14 being ovulation and day 1 being when your period starts. This is the pattern of FSH through your cycle. In the first half, the hormone is stimulating the follicles in your ovary to mature and be ready to release an egg and ovulate around day 14. This is the pattern of estrogen through your cycle. In the first half, you see a big jump. That's the huge estrogen surge that leads to ovulation. Like many hormones in the body, FSH and estrogen operate in a negative feedback cycle, which is why you can see that when estrogen jumps up, FSH has those little dips down. And when FSH has its little jump up, estrogen dips. This is the pattern of LH through your cycle. The most important thing to note here is that this is where one of the only positive feedback cycles in the body occur. The estrogen surge that happens 48 hours before ovulation actually causes an LH surge 24 hours before ovulation. These two surges in hormones are what cause the release of the egg around the 14th day. This is the pattern of progesterone through your cycle. Like the negative feedback cycle between estrogen and FSH, progesterone and LH have a negative feedback cycle as well. So when progesterone shoots up, LH drops. Progesterone is a hormone that promotes gestation, or promotes growing a baby inside of you. And this is relevant in terms of contraceptive methods. So what progesterone does is it thickens your cervical mucus, making it difficult for sperm to survive or get past it. Your body doesn't want to have more sperm trying to fertilize the egg because your body thinks the egg has already been fertilized. And it also causes the uterus to prepare for the egg to implant, so there's more blood flow and the usual urine contractions decrease. As we talk about hormonal contraceptives, I'll refer back to things we talked about that happened during the menstrual cycle. So I'll be going over six forms. You certainly can watch the rest of the video where she touches upon many of the things we're going to hit here. Um, but just to uh, um, abbreviate that and move forward, the combined hormonal contraceptives, um, CHCs if you will, um, come in several forms. Um, birth control pills, this is a picture of a packet including a triphasal form of birth control pill where there are different doses of estrogen for each of seven, uh, each of four periods of seven days, and then a time when there are only sugar pills. As she um, mentions in the video, if you watch that, um, that is when the period occurs. Now, um, these days we do have um, continuous um, hormonal treatment for um, I think 84 or 91 days in some of the products like Seasonal, which are, the woman takes estrogen and progesterone for a long period of time, basically three months, and then has a period or a bleed, if you will. Um, in in the form in most of the birth control pills that are seen, uh, the dose of estrogen stays the same, so the pill color stays the same during the 14 days, I'm sorry, the 21 days of treatment, and then the sugar pills are seven days. The vaginal ring combine, combines both of them, and um, we'll look at a slide in a minute as to how that is inserted, and this stays in for 21 days and then is removed in order to provide for the bleed. 
Um, again, um, if women decide to not have a bleed every month, they could replace the ring and go forward there. That is an off-label um, application. Birth control patches also provide the um, combined hormones for a period of 21 days in similar fashion. However, they are not effective in women who weigh more than 198 pounds. Therefore, we keep it to the smaller sized women. And I don't see a lot of younger women liking the patch. There is a patch as well, estrogen-only patch for um, menopause. That um, seems to be favorable with older women, but younger women don't seem to want to be um, using the patch for um, some reason. And the ring I don't see a lot of either, but it is available. This is a, a picture that shows us where the Nuva ring is inserted. It's also the same insertion method as we have for an estrogen ring, estrogen only ring used in menopausal women for local treatment of vaginal atrophy. Um, so it's the same mechanism of insertion. Um, if you go to the little um, URL um, on the um, slide here in your slide set, which is the consumer how to use um, website for NuvaRing. Um, it's an excellent um, uh, little instructional and with a lots of Q&A that you can click into to find out about the um, NuvaRing. Um, rarely, um, I was quite surprised to read this, but did find a case report about um, the misplacement of a NuvaRing into the bladder. Um, and um, very surprising to me that that could occur um, through the urethra. However, um, it has it has occurred more times than not if women think that they have lost the ring, they have lost it during sexual intercourse or with a bowel movement and it has simply fallen out. So we do ask women to check for it during their cycle. Um, in prescribing the pill, it's not really difficult. It's one of those few prescriptions where the pack is so well labeled and they're given the, um, you don't have to try to tell them on which days to take what. You, they simply get the pack. It's, it's, um, it's labeled as to the numbers of days. Um, the um, things that we do have to consider are that the Progestins, um, we want to be sure that they are later generation um, because they do have some androgenic effect um, as well as some of the older ones can increase cardiovascular risk. Um, estrogens, we go for the lowest dose possible because that creates the lowest risk of cardiovascular events, which is, of course, our biggest concern with these pills. But they also increase the episodes of breakthrough bleeding, or BTB. Very common, especially in the first three months, although it will subside with time. There's a great guide um, that um, I want to refer you to here. Uh, here on these pages um, that kind of guide us through the decision making, we can see that we start, of course, with doing kind of a risk assessment. Um, patients who are not eligible for combined um, hormone therapy. Um, and work, work our way through there. Then we look and um, check their uh, blood pressure as well as any unusual symptoms and check weight in terms of for the patch if that's going to be a decision point. So the quick start approach is the preferred method for starting um, any of the contraception. Um, and if the first day of the last menstrual period is less than five days ago, we go ahead and initiate contraception today. Um, if not, we want to um, provide backup, do a pregnancy check, and of course recheck them in three weeks after starting either the Depo-Provera, which I'll talk about in a minute, or extended cycle pill, um, or if they have no um, period after the first cycle pill. I do want to make a note that the um, the uh, quick start calls for literally starting it the day that they pick up the pill pack, which is fine. The old way used to have them wait until Sunday after the next period. And the nice thing about that is that when they did um, use it for the 21 days, their period would not occur over the weekend. So sometimes people like to start on a Sunday. So some special instructions about prescribing any of the pills, whether it's combined or progestin only. 
Um, they should definitely be taken at the same time every day, and I tell people really within an hour is the best um, plan because the doses now are so low, they don't have a lot of cross coverage after 24 hours. If they miss one pill, they should take the next one as soon as possible using a backup, backup birth control method for seven days. Um, and even if they've missed a day or two, um, sometimes I'll have them go ahead and double up um, there. They'll get pretty nauseated if they take more than three pills in one day because that's kind of like um, the morning after um, regimen where they, they have just too much going on. So um, one day definitely take the next pill. Um, now they will have breakthrough bleeding regardless of when they take their pill and it's fairly common in the first several cycles especially with our new lower dose medications um, and so we just um, just encourage women to you know kind of stick with it and um, and try to make it themselves get through the first three or four months with some um, guidance and um, just realizing that they will have breakthrough bleeding. If they're nauseated, especially women who are sensitive to estrogen, and that's pretty common, um, I have patients take the pill at bedtime and that helps quite a bit. This is what we teach the patient in terms of looking for signs and symptoms of um, um, cardiovascular events. Um, it's the AICS mnemonic. You hear it everywhere. You see it on all the packaging. And it really has to do with um, any vascular events such as um, myocardial infarction, stroke, or um, DVT, deep vein thrombosis, which are the fearful but rare um, side effects. Of course, these are much worse with smokers, and in women over 35 who smoke, we absolutely um, find these um, estrogen-containing medications to be contraindicated. And even um, for women under 35, some of us really prefer not to prescribe them although it's always a balancing act between which is more dangerous, having a pregnancy and smoking or um, using the pill and smoking. So in younger women, it's a, it's a judgment call, and we certainly push them to quit. Clinical decision-making um, can be done both by using the method as, um, you know, certainly the information in the pamphlet that I already went through in terms of making decisions and kind of culling off the people who shouldn't take the combined pills and deciding which one might be better for each person method-wise. But in addition, we have some other fine-tuning we can do. And I use a reference that does have a newer version, by the way. So I'm going to use an older one just for demonstration purposes. But um, it helps us to sort out amongst people who then have specific symptoms that we're trying to either co-treat or situations where we want to be very careful. So first we have, uh, number one is a 45-year-old uh, irregular menses perimenopause. Second is a 17-year-old with cystic acne. Third is a 20-year-old with heavy menses and severe cramping. And fourth is a 28-year-old non-smoker but who's heavy, great, um, heavy in weight. So what I've done here in this copy of a table from the Dickey book, which is like our little Bible of prescribing, is to give you the numbers here that correspond to the patients that we've described in the slide prior. You'll see there are two sections where I've indicated that woman number one might apply. So she's looking at um, having um, both the fact that she's older than 35 and also she has the irregular menses. Patient 2 has the um, infrequent menses and the acne. Um, she may or may not have the infrequent menses, but the acne is what tipped me to this group. And then here we have the heavy menses, and then here we have the heavier person. So over to the right in this column, we see which are the suggested groups of oral contraceptives. And this is where we go to Table 9. So in Table 9, we see that Case um, 1 would be best served if we look we kind of combine her two groupings with five and or eight. Um, and so we look at those and see which brands might match that. And then you can go down through and look at your leisure at the rest of them. I have already mentioned the progestin only options and here is a nice little video clip if you want to look at that on your own about how to insert the implanon. The Mirena is a great choice for women. Um, it has progestin in it, and this is a nice slide that explains its mechanisms of action. Emergency contraception. In this slide, you see how you're going to do a little exercise to learn about that.